I guess a nice way to start these stories is to start with the the beginning. Oh my God, what is the beginning truly? <laughs> I think this, I'm going to do a lot of going back, you know, go into the define the matter world and back into the meta vision where <laughs> nothing really <laughs> makes that much sense. But yeah, I hope you can follow me. <laughs> So yeah, I guess uh, let's start by one of the beginnings, one big beginning that I had, which is how did I end up living in Bali? How on earth did I end up coming here to live and experience this magnificent life here in sacred Bali? Oh, I'm probably going to forget a bunch of stuff in the story but i trust that all of the perfect little thing will come out of my memory to land here in this podcast so that you can hear and receive fully all of them so here it is six years ago in 2016 i came to bali with my bigger sister um we decided to go for backpacking uh, for four months throughout Southeast Asia. So we started with Thailand and Laos, then Cambodia, then Vietnam, and we finished by Bali. Uh, during our, of our journey, it was so beautiful, so beautiful. We, <laughs> it was not a restful journey trip. We would move every two or three days. We saw so many things, met so many cultures, people, situations, experience, exploration of life, of the world, of food. Oh God, the food. Thai curry. Hell yes. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. It was also a very difficult journey. <laughs> we, yeah, it, it was a whole thing, you know, when you go at the other end of the world, traveling with your sister for the first time as this big journey with just a backpack and all this independence, all this, you got to take care of yourself. It was a lot of teaching, a lot of beauty. And we ended up in Bali. That was the last part of our trip. We were actually exhausted after moving around every two or three days. We arrived in Bali, really, our batteries were flat, like no energy whatsoever to experience this land to the fullest and yet we felt home we felt this deep connection this oh my god this is the best place on earth that was the feeling it was just in the air in the vibe in the smiles of all of the people bali was just so special so she took care of us for a month we rested and then we went home back in France, and I continued my life. This really opened me to the travel, so I continued traveling a lot in Europe after that, the same year. I even went to California to see a friend in the summer following. Just continued my journeys, my trips, uh, continued my racing life with a lot of friends, a lot of parties, a lot of, yeah, a very full life. So Bali was always in the back of my mind, but really just in the back of it, in the back of my life. It was not a question for so long. And yet I always had it in my heart. Like it was always this thing, like a deep knowing of this is somewhere I am called and I know I will go back to. This is a place I know I have to go back. So years pass and um, I am in a relationship for four years with this amazing man. And together we kind of like uh, fall into, you know, the very basic European life, if I would say. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we get an apartment in a beautiful city named Bordeaux. And uh, we get a dog, my daughter, Echo. Um, he has the job in the big company. And I don't feel like um, I belong <laughs> in this kind of uh, rhythm of life, in this kind of society-like type of living. I never felt like it was okay for me to have like a 9-to-5 job. So I was always finding my way to 
myself. Um, I was doing a lot, of course, of self-development and uh, research in spirituality, also quantum physics, for now five years since, uh, since I returned from Bali, actually. So I was doing a lot of that. And uh, throughout all of my exploration of the self, um, I started really seeing uh, the truth of me, seeing that indeed what really matters to me is what is happening inside, the big questions, the whys, the existential life question, like how is this all happening, what is the universe all about, how does my mind work, how does life work? And just getting so obsessed and interested and passionate about all of those questions. So I went on this deep self-journey of self-discovery, self-exploration. And uh, this led me to um, discover a lot of practices, spiritual practices like meditation, yoga, also some modalities like hypnosis or sound healing, energy healing so many other things that actually led me to this path of starting to study as a professional mission. So in this city, living with this boyfriend in this apartment, I would uh, only <laughs> really take all the time, all of my time, I didn't really, um, money was not my priority. My prior priority was to be fundamentally happy. And what was making me happy was to explore my inner world and the universe so I would spend all of my time exploring that and then I started doing some trainings and um yeah like hypnosis NLP access bar energy healing Reiki all of those to yeah try to <laughs> find a sense try to also fit in you know fit in those boxes that ask me to have a job to to do something with all of these hours in my daily life that resemble uh whatever everyone else around me is doing so i had to turn it into a job that's why i started yeah uh, doing all of those professional trainings which was amazing i learned so much my god it was so beautiful then i opened a practice actually in this city and then covid happened so we were quarantined. I didn't do any session in my practice anymore. And this time, as beautiful as it was and very sweet with this man that was a very extraordinary man. Oh my God. After, yeah, after this one year and a half, I guess, or one year, I don't even remember. But in this summer of, wait, what year are we now? 2022 summer of 2020 no it was only six months summer of 2020 we finally get out and we go to greece to this um his my boyfriend's parents house we go to greece for a week i was already really exhausted by the whole thing by the whole life of it like i know i have a purpose i know i love what i love i'm passionate about things but wow it felt like i was so limited i was so oppressed in every possible way i just didn't have any way out, any solution whatsoever coming up at me. So then we planned this trip in Greece, one week to go there. Oh my God, this feels like such a relief. To me, this is the answer to all of my problems because I feel so oppressed, so limited, so defined and finite. To me, seeing this week of Greece, I can see that the environment is just going to open all of my vision, open my mind just get me so much more inspiration again like I'm gonna get a shot of inspiration and come back so fresh so full so ready to take action and like continue this whatever it is so we go to Greece it's amazing I love it it really yes nourishes me in every way possible I mean, I mean the sun the water floating in the water this is just everything to me yeah, just so nourishing to be, oh my God, the views, the views, these very expanded views, like it's, yeah, it's finally opening me. So I'm like, great, I am ready to go back into my life with my boyfriend in my beautiful apartment by the lake in this beautiful city. I am ready to go back, to find a new calling, to make it happen, to be happy. 
we come back. And within the three days we come back, I am crying all the time. And I am unhappy. I am fundamentally unhappy. I cannot stand to be here. For some reason that is completely not about the apartment, the city, the boyfriend, or any of it. It's just, it's, it was like now with a little bit of um, experience and time between this moment and now, I can see that it was just over for me. My energy was already in the next step, in the next chapter. My soul was already made the decision for me. That's why it became unbearable for me to continue being in that past life, in that past version of me. So it was truly unbearable. And uh, after three days, I was crying all the time. And there was something, every trigger, oh my God, on our relationship, my jealousy, everything would come up so strong. And I would be very difficult because he was content this way. And I couldn't put my finger on it, but nothing was right to me. And of course, I would let him know and this would create a lot of things between us. Anyway, one night, um, he breaks up with me, which is absolutely wow, crazy at the time to even consider breaking up. That was not even a possibility. He breaks up with me. Then we go into this deep, uh, wow, impossibility to actually go through with that decision, both of us. So we tried to do differently. We decided that since I am miserable here for some reason, I'm going to go back, move out and go back to my hometown, go back to my parents for a few months and pursue my own dream of leaving France. Because that was the inherent calling that I was not listening for so many years. That was Bali. Bali was calling me all the time. All the time. I was just not willing to look at it, to look at the calling, to answer it. Because I was so scared to lose my ground, my security, my relationship. At this time, I was so insecure, not self-secure, not in my own base, that all of my happiness and my stability was in the hand of my boyfriend that I put. And my relationship and all of what we created. So if I didn't have that, I didn't have nothing, I would die. I would not be anymore. I would be miserable and terrible. So I never listened. But at the time, this moment, I don't know if you can feel what I mean, but whoa, it became so unbearable. I couldn't even stand to be where I was. So my boyfriend at the time really tried to understand me. And he encouraged me to follow through with my dream, which was going to Bali. That was always it i knew it so we decided in september 2020 i go back to my parents wait a few months until bali opens and then i go to bali and his big dream was to actually follow through with um, working in big companies in another city so he would do that and then maybe we uh, he comes back at, to me in bali and whatever but we believe that a solution will come up but we had to follow on our dreams. This was not even a possibility now anymore. It was just so strong. So we did that. I moved out. I took all my things. I took our dog, my daughter, Echo. <laughs> and I went to my parents. And I thought, okay, three months. And in December, probably open for Christmas, Bali. So I'll go to Bali. A few months pass. My experience in my parents' house is <laughs> quite intense because, yeah. I don't know if you've had that uh, experience before, going back to your parents as an adult, but of course, this is they are the bigger mirrors, teachers, and triggers. <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't um, a retreat, if I would say, and uh, I learned a lot, a lot. I had no idea that all this time was preparing me for my coming here. So yeah, I go to my parents. A few months passes, I see my boyfriend times to times when we commute from this city to the other. It was four hours drive, so we didn't see each other very often. I think once every two, three weeks. And then Christmas passes, we see each other one more time at Christmas at the mountain for skiing. It was a bit weird. Honestly, we didn't really, we weren't be, being honest with ourselves because we were too scared to leave each other after all this time and all these projections that we made for one another in each other's lives. But even if we didn't accept it at that moment, it was already over since a long time. We just didn't want to see it. 
something very interesting happened. On New Year's Eve, 31 December of 2020, I was in Toulouse with my best friends, having an amazing party. My boyfriend was not here, he was with his other friends in another city. This night, something shifted. It was like literally the end of an era and the beginning of another, right? 31 December, end of 2020, welcome 2021. This energetically is such a big shift, such a big shift. And yes, we can use it with uh, intentions for the new year and stuff like that. But even if our mind don't use it, it's still something so big happening. And there's an opportunity. So for me, the opportunity felt very unconscious because it was first energetic. Oh, energetic. So I do my party. It was amazing. I connect so deep with my best friends. I wake up, go home. And on that day, wow, something incredible was, an energy was going through me. All of a sudden, after four years of dedication and devotion to my boyfriend that I really love. First time ever that inside of me, I know it's over. And I'm totally okay with that. This was the energy inside of me. Whoa, I was so shocked. Like there was no struggle. There was no effort to be made or courage or whatever. No, it was already there. It was, oh, that's it. I released. I am free from the bond. This story is over. Yeah, it's over. So I called him and I told him. I, I didn't tell him that actually. I told him, look, I'm going to take a few days, think about some things, and then let's call each other. And just saying that, he knew. Like he felt it. It's incredible how I think maybe, we never talked about this, but maybe he felt the same thing, the same shift happening. And it was so strong. The energy was so, so strong. We could not even... Um, ignore it you know so yeah a few days pass and it's very clear I call him and I don't even have to say it he's like yes it's over and then we just had a beautiful talk and stayed friends as much as we can it was always uh, very peaceful between us so yeah um, early January this was over and this really was the beginning of the rest of my life because as I was closing one door that was asking to be closed for so long and I, I've been ignoring so long, I was finally closing that door and I was finally, finally emptying up the space filled by this thing that was already gone, already dead, already misaligned, has been obsolete. So I was... I didn't know, but I was creating so much space. Oh my God, so much space inside of me in my life. And what I thought was going to be three months in my parents' house to go to Bali in the, in, in the following turned into eight months because Bali didn't open so fast. <laughs> so after this major breakup, I stayed five more months in my parents' house. Or four, I don't know. But yeah, I stayed more. And um, this was not easy. My Actually, my close ones didn't understand why I was not with my boyfriend anymore. They loved him so much. He was perfect. He was. But how do I explain that life just has other plans for him and for me? And we cannot control that because at some point we need to listen to our hearts. And it doesn't make sense rationally. But it is needed. And even if we don't know why yet, just yet good god if we just trust and keep moving forward jumping jumping out of faith following our hearts life will show us why it happened why we had to clear the space what was there longing for us to welcome them and that's exactly what happened moving forward boom may 2021 this is it bali open i took my business visa and i'm out of here <laughs> I decided to go for three months and then come back to France because I had the training that I really wanted to do. And um, and then maybe go back. You know, if I really like it, I take my dog and I go back and live there forever. Why not? So I go to Bali. Whoa, incredible, incredible. The feeling, oh my God, I have to tell you this. I take all of my trains and 
the thing. Oh, right. I remember. I was so scared, <laughs> you know, for the COVID thing, uh, to have the COVID before. And when my, when I do my PCR the day before of my big journey to get to Bali, then it's positive and what the fuck, everything is ruined, right? But no, <laughs> I kept trusting. Uh, of course, I'm already, you know, I, I told you. Now it's been six years that I work on myself, that I'm very... I spend mostly of my time, all of my time, um, studying spirituality, universe, self-development, and basically our creative power in life. So I already had all the tools to help me take this leap of faith until the end, until the very, very end where I am there in Bali. So I used all my tools not to get too stressed out and give too much power to those... Mm, to those thoughts that could create actually the fact that I'm not going, right? Because we are such creators. <laughs> so I used all of my tools. I remember I was so nervous and I was trying to stay in my heart and believe so strong, but I could feel it. Honestly, my mind was all crazy up with fears because I was taking the biggest leap of faith of my life. I had no idea what will happen. I just had a ticket. I didn't even know where to sleep. I think I took a guest house for the first room, for the first night. I didn't know what I was going to do there, or I didn't know on there, but I just knew that, oh God, I just felt so strong, so deep, the truth of it, the alignment. Like, I don't think I've ever felt something so right before that moment. So yeah, the day ha arrive uh everything is in order i start my journey i go to barcelona in a train oh my god in the train i was listening to my rock and roll playlist and just like oh wow looking at these landscapes and feeling so open so open so at peace my god i left my home my parents my dog my life i left everything with so much peace so much peace this is this piece right there, to me, this is the signal that you are doing something very right. When you're moving forward, you're taking a big leap, big jump, and you feel that peace. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You are on the right way, <laughs> the highest way. So, yeah, I did my journey with so much peace, so much excitement. And, uh, oh, God, there was a quarantine in Jakarta for six days for me. Don't even mention that. Oh, should I? Maybe. I had the shittiest hotel ever. <laughs> uh, I'm a vegan, mostly. Uh, vegetarian, otherwise. And uh, this hotel didn't understand English. <laughs> so even when I was trying to talk Bahasa Indonesia, I don't know, for some reason, they didn't want to, end, to understand me or couldn't. I don't know why. Just communication wasn't going through. And uh, apparently, vegetarian or vegan was really out of their reach. So... I basically ate white rice for one week, which was very difficult for me. Very difficult. At first, I was so triggered. I was like crying, screaming, being so angry. But then that was my first teaching. That was my first teaching. After a few days, I dropped into even more peace. I was at the end of the world in Jakarta, in the, big, in the middle of the center of the city. In a hotel room stuck for six days with no windows to open. Yes, I know. And I didn't have food. And in that moment, I could break free. I was, that's for another podcast. Otherwise, we're going to stay here forever. But <laughs> I've been on this detachment, um, detachment journey since beginning of 2020 where I would detach from many, many things that would keep me in prison or dependent of them. So I started this long journey. I will share with you maybe everything I detached from and how it started and what happened. But this was such a big deal. What happened in that hotel room? I started detaching from my dependence of food. It was the beginning of that. I could see that even without the food that I thought I needed, or that I thought I wanted, I was perfectly healthy. I was perfectly alive. I was perfectly here, now, being. I was okay, fundamentally. 
And that was such a big teaching. I was like, whoa, you know, I don't need things. I don't need food to be okay. I was actually so grateful to leave that crazy experience, to realize that. And I think it was such a big part also of the clearing that needed to be done before Bali. Because like I told you, those eight months in my parents' house, I didn't know that at the time, but they really were preparing me for Bali. Bali has such a special vibration. To me, she's calling everyone who's going there. She's been calling me for a while now. I knew that. But I needed to be ready for her. My vibration needed to be a match. And for that, I believe some things needed to be acknowledged. In my awareness, in my consciousness, some things needed to be cleared, to be lived, to be triggered and understand in more open visions before I get to Bali. Because what I was about to live here was going to change all of my life, all of my vision. Everything that I ever thought I knew about myself, about others, about life, about the world was going to be shifting in the most beautiful, intensive, magical, profound way. So I finally reached Bali. And as I walk out of the airport, and finally I am there, I am there, I am with my suitcase, my backpack. I get out, the doors open. I just feel the air. I feel the air. The warmth on my skin. I feel the air, the warmth in my nostrils, in my nose. I can smell Bali. It's such a remembrance. This is home. This is so beautiful. And I was crying of joy, of wow, I made it. After all this time, all this experience, all these challenges, I am here. I am here. There is no one with me. No one to stop me. No one to make me drift. No one to inspire me to something else. <laughs> there is just me and I'm here. I'm there. I see you. Bali. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me once again. Thank you for calling me so strong, so loud that I could not ignore you. So I am there. I take a moment. I breathe the air. I smell the smells. Oh my God. <laughs> this is one of the happiest moments ever. And in order to reach the taxi that would take me to my first stop, there is this uh, kind of this tunnel where you walk. It's so beautiful. It's an open tunnel with a kind of a roof. And <laughs> attached on the ceiling, when you look up, you can see all those kites. You know the kites that the child in Bali, they all have. They, they hold with a rope and they go high in the sky. And the kites are all kinds of shape. And as I, I lift my head up, I see a phoenix and a butterfly. So big. There was only those two. A phoenix and a butterfly. <laughs> and oh my God. <laughs> At this moment, it was like Bali was welcoming me was welcoming me, telling me, hey, you made it. I'm proud of you. And this is what I have planned for you. The biggest metamorphosis and rebirthing that you will ever live. Thank you for answering my call. Welcome, Sophie. Welcome home. 